Hello, welcome to the lecture series on advanced VLSI design course. I am Virendra Singh from Electrical Engineering Department of IIT Bombay. I will take you through design verification challenges in these couple of lectures. Today it is the introductory lecture. I will discuss about uh, the challenges of VLSI design verification and in due course of time I will take you through various challenges, their uh, techniques to, to handle this and open research problems. So, as mentioned by Professor Chandodkar very early in this course that VLSI circuits have gone through various phases and if you look at one of the examples like microprocessor which was a started early in 70s with 4004 and it has taken a long journey up to now current say Intel i7 processor. So, I4004 was fabricated with uh, 2300 transistors whereas, now we have billions of transistors on the same chip. So, now you, you can see the, the, the growth of the transistors hence complexity of design is, is in increasing uh, dramatically. So, the number of transistors are increasing, number of input output are, are also increasing. Now, here the big challenge is how to verify the correctness of the design. If you look at the VLSI design real, realization flow, it starts from the customer's need. Customer's need may be in terms of like one customer may want to have, want to build a chip for a microwave oven controller. So, he can give his requirement like if you, if you put milk in the, the microwave oven, it should operate for 10 minutes and run at 300, 300 watt. If you want to cook rice, then, then it, it has to run for, for say 15 minutes at uh, 350 watts or so and so forth. This re requirement, so from this design engineer or, or uh, has to figure out what are the, the, the various requirements because the, the, the need is, is vague in nature. Based on the, the, the requirement here the design engineer has to write some specifications which are more formal than the English uh, like language. Once you write, write these formal uh, specifications, so your, your requirement may directly come from the, the algorithm like here you want to, to implement say image processing algorithm then uh, uh, algorithms are non known and then your, your specification may be the, the C code. Uh, so, from that you have to, to synthesize your circuit and the, so it has to go, go through various steps of syn synthesis which are fairly automatic uh, steps. One, once you, you uh, synthesize the, the circuit do so do the place and route and finally, you uh, have GDS 2 you send that to, to fab uh, and then fab facility will fabricate your chip and give you the, the fabricated chip. Now, you have to, to test each and every manufactured chip for that you need to develop some test vectors that can test your chip in reasonable time. So, these are the very various phases. Now, here when you means when you are uh, synthesizing your circuit, you have a specification as your golden reference model and then you, you from the, the specification you have to go to RT level transformation from RT you have to go to get level net list from get level net list transistor level implementation and then you do the place and route and then uh, finally, the, the layout. So, all these transformations have to respect the, the, the given specification. So, now, now here what we want that here at every level we have to validate with respect to the laid down specifications. Now, if you, you, you zoom in this process little bit in that case here you ca can see say the see that there is a art from a specification you generate the RTL design the, the, that you are writing in VSDL or Verilog from there, there you, you have to, to synthesize a gate level net list, you optimize for various parameters, parameters can be area, power, performance or testability. Then once you do that, you, you have to, to insert the, the design for test points and, and you have to augment your circuit for in order to make it easy, easier to test. 
after that that you have to uh, insert IO from, uh, after doing that you, you have to do the pleasant route and then you do the cl clock tree synthesis and, and uh, so yeah you do the cl clock tree synthesis routing and then uh, means after uh, routing if if you are not able to to still meet your requirement meant you you have to do the the ECO that is the electronic change order. So, now in this process the, the bigger challenge is that, that you have to in all these transformations you have to make sure that they respect specifications. Now, how do we do that? So, let us go through first couple of definitions that we do use. The, the first thing is design synthesis. So, design synthesis is a process uh, design synthesis process is defined as for a given I O function development of a procedure uh, to manufacture a device using known material and, and processes. Verification is defined as predictive analysis to ensure that the synthesized design when it will be manufactured it will perform the given input output function. The test is defined as manufacturing step that ensure that the, the physical device which is manufactured from the synthesized design has no manufacturing defect. So, design synthesis essentially tells you that, that how I can obtain a given I O functionality, because customer is, is, is concerned about the I O functionality, he is not concerned about how you are implementing that, whether you are de designing sequential circuit or combinational circuit, whether you, you are implementing that using CMOS or you are implementing using NMOS or you are using implementing using, using TTL. So, the customer wants given input output functionality. Then once you, you, you have done that, you have to analyze that whether a, your uh, synthesized design respect the form the specification that those were laid down for the, the synthesis. Uh, so, uh, the, that is why it is a, it's a predictive an analysis that can ensure the, the correctness of the behavior. So, now if you, if you look at the, the complexity of the design. Now, because design as, as I mentioned earlier that now current design do have billions of, of, of transistors and that kind of design we cannot design as a flat circuit, we have to have hierarchy and then so that, that means here uh, the various steps we have to go through this from the, the, the system level design to the, the algorithm like here you, you have a system that can implement various algorithms like if, if, if you are uh, processing image there are various uh, uh, algorithms like segmentation tracking and, and so on and so forth. So, now, now, now for a given algorithm you have to, to write the RTL from RTL you have to, to generate the gate level netlist from there you have to have transistor level implementation and, and then place and route and finally, you have layout. So, if you look at the, the complexity this is a pyramidal uh, structure. So, at system level the, the complexity uh, may, may be few lines of, of C code and then if you go to, to RTL you will have few hundreds or, or thousands line of, of R very low or VSTL code. Then if you go to gate level netlist you may have several millions of, of gates. Then if you go, go to transistor level implementation you may have hundreds of millions of, of, of transistors and so on and so forth. So, now, now, now if you go down your, your complexity increases at the same time accuracy increases. What the, the, this accuracy mean? Like when we design a circuit, we design for given specifications and, uh, and then here we as a uh, engineer, we want to optimize our circuit for a few parameters and those parameters are like area, performance, power and testability. So, at every level of abstraction when you, you do the RT le level design or gate level design you have to estimate how much area it will co consume, how much power it will dissipate, how, what kind of performance I will get and how easy it is to test. So, now uh, at higher level of abstraction the estimation is very crude. If you go down 
the, uh, and if you do the, the layout and if you extract the parasitic then then you may have more exact values of of the the, the power dissipation area consumption uh, and uh, performance all these things so now here if you go down your accuracy increases but at higher level of abstraction the complexity is smaller you can handle uh, it in, in in better better fashion so now now conventionally here we start from the, the specification and and we go down to the, the implementation so you have a specification the, the, those are are few lines of of c code we have from a specification you have to to architect your system that may have like how many you you need to have say processor a dsp or or a gpu then you need some memory then you need some glue logic or or uh, custom uh, logic now if you if you, you go go down in each of the, the these block here you can uh, write the rtl code for that and the rtl code will tell you that what kind of data path you will have what kind of controller you will have and how data flow will take place so this gives you the, the the design flow now this is your specification when you are you are transforming from the specification to the system architecture to the rta you you have to make sure that always here it has to respect the specification if you look at the the time consumed by various activities in the design flow these activities are listed here these are based on the the time survey this is bit alt which was done in, in 2000. If you look at it here you, you will see that most of the, the time would be is consumed by design verification, then design creation, then place and route and, uh, and then here <coughs> your design rule checking, static timing analysis and, uh, and, and so on and so forth. Though here if you, you add these numbers it may go beyond 100 because couple of activities are being done in parallel. So, the these are, are uh, from the, the old generation designs, now in, in current design the, the design verification uh, time increase little bit from 50 percent to 60, uh, 60 plus percent and uh, then here design creation shrink little bit from 32 to say 25 percent or, or like that. Because now here most of the, the time we are not designing systems from the scratch we use IPs. So, the key observation from this slide is that most of the time we spent for the design verification. So, that means, it, this is the critical part in the design flow. Hence, we have to have very efficient method methodology to, to verify the design if we want to reduce the, the, the design time. And it is reported by by a couple of industries that if you, you, you your design cycle escalate by 6 months the total revenue decreases by 30 percent that is huge. So, that means here the, the time to market is very very important and you have to, to design manufacture and ship the, the chip as fast as possible. If you look at the, 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 uh, the revenue, in that ca case here revenue model goes like this, initially company go gets very high profit margin and then slowly it, it goes down. If there, there is a escalation in that case here that, that, that will go like this. So, so, now here now you will have this, this much revenue that can be earned from the product and that is understandable because here initially you, uh, your new product has an age in the market then slowly the, the your competitor will also launch the same similar uh, kind of functionality in the market and then you have to reduce the, the, the cost. So, then profit margin decreases. So, as I said that key thing is we are spending too much time in, in design verification you have to reduce that time. So, how I ca can reduce that time? Now, if you look at in the pyramidal structure as we, we, we discuss that the complexity at higher level of abstraction is, is lower whereas, the, the accuracy is poor as well. So, now if, if, if you design a system at system level if you get a bug 
in that case because the complexity is, is, is low you need less time to find that bug or locate that bug and the, the fixing of that bug. So, say here at the system level a, a fixing of a bug takes 3 minutes. If you go down at RT level where, where the, the, the design complexity increases by, by order of magnitudes, then the location of bug or detection of bug and fixing of bug takes longer time because the, the, the design is, is more complex. And so, now here fixing of a bug may take 3 days. If you go down further to the, the, the transistor level design, the, the here you have millions of transistors and if you happen to, to detect a bug, the fix location of the localization of that bug and fixing of that bug may take 3 days. So, you can see the, 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 the kind of time taken at different level of abstraction. What it says? It says that we should detect and fix as many bugs as possible at higher level of abstraction, possibly at system level or at RT level. And then we are, when we go from higher level of abstraction to the lower level of abstraction, we should not introduce new bugs or, or, or errors. So, uh, and, and this is the, the, the key thing in the verification. So, we have to remove as many design bugs as possible at earlier stages and we should not introduce new design errors when we are refining the design. If you are go, going from the higher level of abstraction to the lower level of abstraction, you are intro, introducing or, or adding more and more info, information that process is known as refinement. So, we, we should not uh, ideally we, we, we should not uh, add or, or we should add 0 error while we are uh, refining though it is very difficult to, to make sure that there is no error introduced by, while you are refining the system. So, your, your formal uh, verification can help you in this and we will discuss what are the formal techniques that can, can help you in detecting maximum bugs at a higher level of abstraction and that make sure that new newer error will not be, be introduced. Now, look at how severe this problem is. Let us take a very simple example. All of you might have gone through this at uh, some point in time. Let us take a, a, a example of DVD player which all of you have used. Say, a, if you have a DVD player that can have say 6 inputs, maybe play, pause, stop, fast forward, rewind and then if, if you are if, if you are do not pressing any button then, then it does no, nothing. Then in order to, to implement this here we, we implement a, a small finite state machine that can have say 5 states uh, stop, pause, play at normal speed fast forward at, at 2 x speed, rewind at 2 x speed and the, the finite state machine can be designed like this. So, where, wherein you have these 5 states stop, play, pause, fast forward, rewind. If you do not press anything in that case here, it will stay in the same state otherwise it will migrate to the new state. So, here if it is in the, the stop state and, and on the, the arrive getting play input here it goes to the play state if if you press a pause button it has to go go to pause state again here if you you press the play button it can come back to the play state so the, this is very small finite state finite state machine now let's let's see how difficult it is to verify this small machine let's say you have a display that has 1024 into 786 pixels. Every pixel is represented by true color. So, that means, here you can encode that in 32 bits. So, now here if you find out want to find out the number of discrete states that you can have would be equal to 2 raised to the power 32 raised to the power 10 raised to the uh, 1024 into 786. How we get this? 
because here every pixel can be encoded in in in, in uh, 32 bits. So, there, there can be 2 raised to the power 32 states and then here there are 1024 into 786 pixels. So, now, now here the, these are the, the total uh, number of states uh, we can have. In this here we assume that, that that pixels are dependent on each other. So, that means, one uh, one pixel can impact others. So, now here the if I look at the state transition in that case here state transi the transition can be uh, this many number of states to this many number of states right. So, now, now here the, the, the combination of the current state to the next state would be square of this number. As I said that here we are assuming that the, these pixels may have dependence we can fairly assume that pixels are independent to each other that means, one pixel do not affect the, the another pixel. So, if you assume the, the, the independence of the, the, the pixels in that case, case here the number of total number of is, states would be equal to the number of pixels into the no, number of possible colors for a pixel and then here the number of, of internal states. So, 1024 into 786 the total number of pixels one pixel is in encoded in terms of 2 raise to the power 32 uh, states and then here there are 5 internal states. So, the, the, these are, are the total number of, number of states you can have. Now, if you, you press one button it can go, go to another state. So, now here the total number of state transitions would be equal to the number of pixels into the number of possible colors into number of possible inputs that can that you, you may get. So, now 1024 into 786 into 2 raise to the power 32 into 6. So, these are the, the, the total next states. So, now here what would be the, the total number of transitions I can have. So, total number of transitions would be because you can go from any current state to any next state. These are the, the, the next states and these are the, the, the number of number of current states. So, current states multiplied by the next state would be the, the total number number of, of state transitions I we can have. So, the and we have to verify this system for all the, the, the state transitions that in the, the number of state transitions would be 3.4 into 10 raise to the power 32 this is huge number. Assume that we can verify 1 million transitions per second using very fast simulation tool. In that case here it may take several trillion years to verify this design. So, that means, whatever design we created today that would be ready to manufacture after several trillion centuries which is impractical. So, now that means, if you want to exhaustively verify your design you need this many years that is impractical what we want is this should be verified in reasonable time and reasonable time cannot be centuries. So, what could be the reasonable time? If you look at the, 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 the design cycle time it is it is spans somewhere from 6 months to, to 2 years or 3 years and assume that that 60 percent time goes to the verification. So, in that case here it can be, be say a few months to year. So, now, now here your reasonable time is few months to, to year. Now, and exhaustive verification time is trillions of centuries. So, you have to reduce this time from trillions of centuries to few months. It is huge reduction. Keep in mind that we want similar kind of confidence in our design. So, that means, the kind of confidence we, we can have by applying exhaustive test uh, exhaustive simulation vectors we should get, get from a limited uh, number of simulation vectors. This makes it very complex. Now, here I guess this gives you uh, or uh, a flavor how complex the design verification process is, how many order of magnitude verification time we have to cut down. If I recall the 
the statement made by Intel India at VLSI design 2011, he means he said that today it is the design verification or validation engineer who is most important person in the entire design flow. He said that it would be the, the, the design verification engineer who would be able to buy some real estate in, in, in metropolitan cities. That means, here he, he, he is the, the person who would be earning the, the most money. And because now, now as I said that our current design process is IP based. So, now, now here we are integrating more and more IPs which is making your design more complex and then here the it is very very important to visualize the corner cases. And now here and, uh, we, we, I'll, I'll come to a point what are the corner cases, how uh, important it is to visualize the, the, the corner cases. Okay. So, now, now here the let us start or uh, how the your, your design verification flow goes. So, you have a specification those are, are created from the customer's requirement and you want to implement your, your system or circuit and your the, this implementation should respect the, the specification. So, that means, here the, this there would there should be equivalence between the your specification and implementation. How I can do that? I mentioned that there are couple of synthesis steps it has to go go from specification to implementation. So, like R T level synthesis then gate level synthesis transistor level synthesis then place and, and, and route and finally, you get, get G D S 2. So, now now, now here and industry want this automatic process. So, they want that the, the, this should be push button. So, that means, you, you, you feed a specification and then, the, then here it should produce the, the, the design. Now, one of the way is that whatever transformation you are doing to get gate level implementation RT level implementation from a specification and then from RT to, to get level, get level to transistor level in all the, the these transformations. If you can make sure that these transformations are correct, you do not need to verify this. So, if you see, if you believe that your automatic implementation or, or synthesis process is correct you do not need to verify every design. You need to verify only once the implementation of synthesis tools and this. So, this process is correct by construction. So, now, now here I can completely eliminate the cost of design verification which consume lot of time. That is in terms of man hours it, it, it contributes to 60 70 percent. This is anyway beautif beautiful way. Now, what are the problems? Problems are as follows. The verification process of a software piece of code is even harder problem than hardware verification. Why? Because the, the, the design space in software is much bigger and complex than than hardware. In hardware, you may you write the bit vector from 0 to, to 4, 0 to 5 means here you, you need to, to, to use as many bits as you need, but in software piece of code you instantiate one variable say int i. This explodes a design space of 2 raise to the power 32 because the, the, this i can take any value. And now, here the, the verification of the, the entire software is extremely difficult or rather I can say that it is next to impossible. Hence, you cannot rely on the, the, the tools that you are using for the, the synthesis. Hence, you need to verify each and every created design. 
if you can if you can make sure that this synthesis process is correct you can completely eliminate the, the, the design verification cost. So, now what are the options if this is option is not available? One of the, the, the option is you have to simulate your design and what the, 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 the simulation mean? Simulation I can simply say you that you can say, say you implement one XOR gate, what you, you, you can, can do is say there, there are, are several possible in, in input. So, it, if it is two input uh, XOR gate in, input can be 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1. So, you can apply these couple of inputs and then see whether you are getting the correct behavior or not. So, say from for 0 0 0 0 you should get 0, for 0 1 it should be 1, for 1 1 it should be 1 and for 1 1 it should be 0. So, now, now here one way is that, that you can exhaustively simulate this and as I said that exhaustive simulation is, is not possible. So, now here what you, wha what you do is you have to take or, or, or take a subset of the, the, the this exhaustive input pattern and simulate for that and based on that here you make a decision whether uh, your, your design is, is correct or not. So, for the, the this you have to, to build some checkers and, and, and drivers this is called as simulation based verification. Simulation because here we are not exhaustively simulating we cannot have the, the 100 percent confidence in our, our design and it is very time consuming. So, now here again uh, this uh, is, is not, not the, the, the complete, complete method because we cannot simulate exhaustively. So, then here wa what are the other alternative? Other altern alternative is we can use mathematics because ultimately you are going to build a circuit which follows the Boolean algebra. Right? So, so now, now here this, this is your you, you have mathematical expression for the, the function that you want to implement. So, now here if you can specify or, or you can write the specification in, in, in terms of mathematical formula. So, that is say we call uh, formal specifications how you can write that I, I will come to that, that point. Then you can reason about that whether your, your implementation always respect the, 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 the specification or not and this is known as for formal verification technique. So, in hardware verification here the, the, the simulation based verification is, is, is referred as, as simulation based verification and, and this formal technique is referred as formal verification whereas, in software verification domain the simulation based verification is referred as software testing and formal verification is, is referred as software verification. So, sometimes the, the, the these terms are confusing when you talk with the uh, software people. Okay, Let us look at little bit more about what are the, the, the challenges we have with the simulation based verification and what are the challenges we have in front of uh, formal techniques. So, simulation based verification as I said that we cannot exhaustively test. So, now here this is your to total design space and then here there are couple of bugs in the in your in your design. So, you start from from say some initial state and then you you, you start to traverse your, your design in some way and you hit a bug once you hit a bug then then you localize that bug fix that bug and then again you, you, you start your simulation based verification and then you may, may hit another bug and the, the, this way you keep on doing. So, this way here if you happen to hit a bug you can, can say that there is a bug otherwise you can you believe just that there is no bug, but it does not give a guarantee because you did not explore the, the entire entire space. So, now, now here the, the this simulation based verification it can so a uh, there are couple of good things about about the simulation based verification one thing is this can be applied across the design design level so that means at system level at at rt level at gate level at 
transistor level at any level of abstraction you can can apply the, the this technique. But as I said that simulation based verification cannot simulate exhaustively the, the, the entire design. If you cannot then what are the problems? As I said that that, that you, you have to, to pick up the subset of the exhaustive set. Now, here say we were talking of about this XOR gate. So, say here these are the, the, the four possibilities 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Now, if I, I, I pick say the 75 percent of cases that is still big number. So, say as I said in DVD player it takes several centuries if you take 75 percent cases still it will take several centuries. So, even 75 percent is very big number you cannot pick that assume that we, uh, we pick 75 percent cases these are the 75 percent cases I am picking. Now, assume that by mistake in place of writing x or I, I have written only or and then here it implemented or gate. Now, when it implements or gate I look at that and I take the, these three cases 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0. This will give, give me 0, this will give me 1, this will give me 1 and there is an exact match with the XOR gate. Hence, though I, I have implemented OR gate, I will say that, that, that my XOR gate is implemented correctly. So, these 75 percent cases are, are, are not, not sufficient. So, I, I now here when I, I pick these cases I have to pick in such a way that here we can distinguish these. So, now, now here what can distinguish the OR gate and XOR gate this input. So, that means here when you are picking a fewer cases you have to at least pick this case. This is the case when, when you have OR gate this may, may have different kind of matching with the, the, the diff, different kind of kind of gates. So, these we are we are saying corner cases. So, it is very very important to visualize the corner cases and that is why the, the people say that now we in the industry we need the most intelligent people in the verification so that they can visualize the corner cases. And other uh, example of corner cases I, I tell you is say you want to, to implement 1 5 4. Say you have 8 entries in the 5 4 and so now you, you are storing some value in the first entry then you in store some value in the second entry. So, now here how I, I verify that I will write and I will read that uh, and, and if I get the same value in that case it is verified. Now, when you are writing to, to the, the first location or second location or third location here it will behave in the same way. So, once you check for the, the first location you means it will behave for the third, fourth, fifth. When it comes to the, the say the, the eighth location what will happen? Once you, you have written in, in eighth, or eighth location it should generate one specific signal that is buffer full right. So, that means here after writing eighth location you have to check the additionally whether buffer full signal is generated or not that is one of the corner cases because that is different from other other cases. Now, even if it, it uh, generate the bu buffer full signal when you want to write one more value say the, the ninth value it may possible that here the, the, this ninth value it may, may what, what it should say when you are trying to write the ninth value. It should say that buffer is buffer is full you cannot write. So, that means here it should generate overflow signal right. So, that means here when you are trying to write ninth value it should generate the overflow signal this is another corner case. It may so happen that even if means if it, it generates the, the overflow signal, but this can also rewrite that location. So, that means here the, the, the eighth value is rewritten by the ninth value and you have spoiled your, your, your earlier written value. So, you have to check that 
so that, that that means here whether whether it has rewritten that 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 it has overwritten that value or it it is still continue to to uh, to store the the eighth value these are the, the the corner cases so when you are you 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 use the, the simulation based verification you have to visualize these kind of corner cases and so that's very very critical now here as as i said that here most of the time we we goes means we pick up some of the random values and then then we we simulate for those random values and then we 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 top up this with some of the corner cases so I, again here these these random values are are are, are random and this doesn't co cover all the corner cases and we cannot visualize all the corner cases other the problem with the, the simulation based verification is the simulation speed can you think of of how fast or how slow the the simulation process is if you look at the simulation process flow whether it uses the the compiled code simulation or or a event driven simulation the the simulation speed is something 1 to 2 hertz that's very very slow if you look uh, means compare with the the actual device speed device can run at fairly high speed uh, say gigahertz so now your simulation runs 8 to 9 order of magnitude slower than the the, the actual device and now now you 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 can you can compute that even if i i, I run my simulation for 6 months how many vectors i can apply to the, the, this design in order to expedite that the other me me method which is being exercised in the, the industry that is emulation in emulation we try to implement our design on reconfigurable fabric and FPGA is one of the reconfigurable fabric. So, now we implement our design on FPGA. Now, FPGA can, can run at much, much higher speed like 100 megahertz or so, which is significantly faster than, than your, your simulation on general purpose processor. This looks very interesting and very fast. Maybe say say uh, two order of magnitude slower than your, your, your real chip still it is 5 to 6 order of magnitude faster than the simulation. Again your exhaustive simulation needs several centuries. So, 5 to 6 order of magnitude speed up is not sufficient to, to go for, for exhaustive simulation. So, still it is based on the corner uh, cases how good you are in visualizing those corner cases, but now as a means I comfortably said that you, you implement entire design on an FPG and this can work say uh, 200 megahertz to 200 megahertz. Now, what are the, 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 the challenges? Can I do that? If you, if you have a small design you can do that but now say you want to, to ve verify the, the, the current uh, say processor you design new processor that you want to verify so entire design you cannot implement on the, on the, the, the single fpga so you have you need to divide if, if you, you need to divide the, the design so now here say i divide design in, 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 in two blocks half say say 100 million transistors uh, or, or gates i am implementing on this 100 million gates i am implementing on this Earlier when I, I was fitting everything in one here, I need the I O pins equal to the I O pins of, of your, your design. Now, when I, I split this, there are couple of internal signals which are crossing from, from one partition to another partition. And as, as you know that there, there are large number of internal signals and now here these signals may be several may appro approach to million or, or, or several hundred thousands. You can you do not have have hundred thousand pin, I O pins. So, in order to do that what you need to do? You need to, to again further divide this, you need to again further divide this and now, now here you are limited. So, even though you have large number of, of a 
reconfigurable devices available on, on your FPGA, you cannot make use of that because of I O pins. And now your simulation or emulation speed is determined by the I U speed that is much slower in some kilohertz, hundreds of kilohertz that makes it 2, 3 order of magnitude slower than a, a, a single FPGA. So, now here the, 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 the real emulation speed that you can achieve could be hundreds of kilohertz that is still 5, 4, 5 order of magnitude faster than the simulation, but 4, 5 order of magnitude slower than the, the, the real chip. Again I said that here the, the, this in emulation you cannot apply exhaustive simulation vectors. So, you have to you have to rely on the uh, corner ca cases which are, are, are visualized and you know a famous uh, Pentium bug which, uh, which was reported by, by, by Intel when they were dividing two, two numbers there was a change uh, or, or inaccuracy in uh, eighth or, or ninth decimal point and it did cost about 500 million dollars to Intel. So, when I, 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 I mentioned the emulation, Intel heavily uses emula emulation for the, their design verification and now they use hundreds, uh, several hundreds of, of uh, boards. So, FPGA boards to, to uh, verify one design. Okay, so, now, now here the, the, this your simulation or emulation is not um, enough. So, you, you have to you have to go for formal techniques, how formal techniques behave. So, now here what is the difference in the formal techniques and, and simulation based verification. Simulation based verification here you know the, this uh, is you have to apply some test st stimuli or, uh, or a vectors you see the, the, the response whether if it is correct then you say it, it is design is correct otherwise not. So, now here you re heavily rely on the corner cases, but uh, you, you means here this is essentially and very good for the, the initial de design debug. Whereas, formal method here you need to supply the specification in terms of some mathematical formula or logical formula and you have to, to specify some of the properties like here for example, if you have arbiter say you want to design a arbiter you may have a property that your arbiter should not give access to multiple masters at the same time to use the common resource or if you are uh, you have designed a traffic light controller, traffic light controller should not give green signal to cross roads these are the properties. So, now here you, you, you supply these two your formal verifier will tell you whether this property is, is valid for that design or, or implementation or not. If it fails then here it gives you a counter example, counter example means here it will give you a trace of input under which your, your uh, you get the, the, the wrong result that helps you in, in debugging or, or localizing the, the bug. So, now here the formal verification technique is equivalent to all case si simulation for with respect to a given property. So, that means here there are no corner cases this is always correct with respect to a given property. There was there, there, there is a famous caught by E W Dijkstra and what he says is that here program testing that is equivalent to your simulation based verification can be used to show the presence of bug, but it can never show the absence of bug. It is only the formal verification which can say the absence of bug with respect to given a property. Now, here if, if you look at the formal technique like uh, say the, this is a simple circuit all of you know the, this is NAND NAND realization of a XOR gate. If it is XOR gate in that case here formally mathematically I can, can specify the, the output z is equal to x bar y plus x y bar. Right now here uh, the the one of the way is I can use the simulation based verification. So now for x y there can be four possible combinations and then from that I can simulate that here what would be the z and from this one this mathematical expression I can also uh, simulate 
what would be the z and if there is a matching in that case here I, I say that, that this design is correct otherwise it is incorrect. So, this is mathematical this is a simulation based verification. On the other hand I can mathematically uh, verify that. So, now, now here the, the output z I can specify in terms of b and c I can say that z is equal to b bar plus c bar. Now, here what is b? b is a bar plus x bar and, and, and c is a bar plus y bar if I can, can and then here what is a? a is your x bar plus y bar. If I put the, the, the this z this a b bar and, and, and c bar and then here I, I put the, the, the expression for, for a in that case here I will get, get, get this as, as x y bar and, and x, x bar y. I, I can, can rewrite this as x bar y, y plus x y bar that is same as your, your, your mathematical uh, expression. So, that means here this tells you that, that, that this implementation always respect the, the specification that is given as x bar y plus x y bar. Right. So, now, now, now here this is so what this says is all the trans, uh, so this is based on the, the transformation that we use at, at various level uh, which are based on the, the, the axioms and theorems. So, that means here we can use the, the, the mathematical proof for correct correctness. So, if you look at the, the, the formal verification there are there are three different ways to, to, to for formally verify which are being practiced in the, in the industry. One is deductive verification that means here if we have to prove the mathematical theorems. Deductive verification is semi automatic verification techniques because here this is based on the, the, the mathematical axioms and theorems. In order to prove some, some theorem you have to use the, the, the axioms in some particular order and so now here the, the tools are not very intelligent. So, you, you have to to intervene the, the, the pro execution of those tools and guide the, them how it should progress to, to quickly verify the, the, that, that property. So, this is a semi automatic uh, tool. So, it is based on the axioms rules to pro prove the, the correctness it is uh, difficult and time consuming. There are other techniques here like here uh, your equivalence checking and, and model checking. Equivalence checking is the, the, the check, check of equivalence of two design like here for example, if, if you verify the, the um, design of an, an adder with, 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 uh, with the, the specification now and, and that, that may be your, your ripple carry adder. Now, you, you optimize that and, and for, for timing you, you design carry look ahead adder and you want to make sure that bo both of the, the, the adders are, are equivalent. So, now, now here the equivalence checking can be, be used and the, this equivalence checking is, is fairly automatic technique and it ca can handle very large design and equivalence checking can be used at various level of abstraction. The other uh, technique that we use is the, the, the model checking. In model checking here we specify the design behavior using some mathematical formula and uh, we, we have to model the, the implementation using finite state machine or, or, or finite automata and then we, we, we prove the, the correctness of some of the property which are, are specified in using mathematical formula. Uh, again here the, the, this, this is based on the, the symbolic algorithm like BDD check, uh, based uh, technique or set based technique and this is fairly tech, automatic technique. So, model checking and, and equivalence checking are fairly automatic technique whereas, the, the deductive verification is semi formal technique. In, due, uh, in uh, next couple of lectures, I will briefly discuss about these uh, equivalence checking, model checking and, and deductive verification techniques. Thank you very much for your patience for listening. We will continue with this in the next lecture.